What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanashi and Amiri Mishings. And today, we are playing Isengard against Rohan on the epic map Forts of Isen in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. And we are going to try something completely different. Instead of building a Uruk pit, which would be a normal opening and build order in this matchup, we will actually build up two furnaces and try to rush the Lords. And with the Urukai at the beginning of the game and the Warchan from the Spellbook of Isengard, we will try our best to keep those settlements outside protected as long as it's possible. So remember, Uruks are the fastest, the best looking. Look at their teeth, boys. And also the strongest Warchan in the game. And with the Warchan, we can make them even stronger. And we should be easily able to fight against two, three, four peasants with one single Urukai. Okay, so... That's like a very risky opening <laughs> because that's going to delay our, you know, Uruks and also pikemen quite a lot. And, uh, you know, it's... I don't try that at home yet. <laughs> Let me tell you that much. It might not work out because in this matchup you want to actually get your pikemen on the field as soon as you can. And for that reason you need to get your Uruk pit to level 2. But since we have no Uruk pit up on the field, it's going to take a while <laughs> since we can get pikemen recruited. But he's fighting us, that's okay. I mean, the thing is, he has actually two choices. Either he's gonna stand and fight and deal at least some damage in return, or he's just gonna ignore and keep moving on. We will be able to catch him anyway. Watch this. They have no escape possibility. And the only bet of Rohan early on is to recruit additional peasants. Remember, Rohan has the advantage early on over all the other factions because you can use your resource building as also like a barracks at the very same time. And we also need to use our Lamrimin workers to scout. I like to use them for scouting, just to have a lot of information from the map, to see what is going on. That's going to increase my reaction time, and I will be able to see the enemy units way before they can reach out to me. Easy defense, easy defense, easy defense. So we have three furnaces, two mills outside, that's great. And now it's about to save a little bit more money, I want to build at least one more, maybe, a uh, furnace, and then rush to Lourdes. Lourdes costs 1400, it's going to be a risky, and in the worst case scenario, we will be losing the meals outside, and, you know, it's pretty painful, but it's winnable. Now we gotta, we gotta try to stall. Our war chain is on cooldown, so if he actually turns and fights us, we should not be able to win this fight. And for that reason, we need to fight and disengage. Fight and disengage and kind of stall, you know? We have also vision around the top side, that's very important. Deal more and more damage to the peasants, that's what we like to see. <laughs> Look, they, they are... You cannot disengage, dude. That is, that's not possible. You need to stand and fight. And that's a very good situation for me, because if he would actually turn and fight, I would be in trouble. I mean, I would not fight this. Basically, I would just disengage and then engage again, disengage, engage again. But at this point, we are trying to save for Lord. So we have 1,000 now. We need 400 more resources. And then the fighting Urukai is going to be recruited. And, uh, you know, oh, there is a Hobbit. You see how impo impactful and important those little Lamrimin workers are around the map. They give you so much information. And now we can even use Warchant here, right? And fight this. There we go. Dude, with the one Urukai boys, we will be able to kill two, not two, but four peasants all alone. That's pretty impressive. Now we have seen the Hobbit. We know the Hobbit is going to come from the downside. And the Lord is a very efficient hero in this matchup against Rohan Rohirrim because unlike the Gondonites, Rohirrim are kind of vulnerable against archer heroes. Okay. Alright. The, I mean, there is a downside of the strategy and that's like a more like a fun strategy. The downside is we have not enough units on the field to fight for the map control. That's the problem, right? And our opponent, he might be able to creep quite a lot. If the Rohirrim, let's cripple down this... A hobbit, so he has. <laughs> uh, he's not gonna be annoying, you know? Oh, he got invisible, but if you don't know, cripple ability or any ability, like spear throw from Elma, smite from Eowyn, hoax strike from Legolas, and so on, they are able, when you right click on them, to detect and automatically attack the stealth units. So if you, for example, there is a hobbit hiding in your settlement, you can just right click on the ability from Lourdes, the cripple, and Lourdes will be able to find and target this hobbit. It also works on Visa Plus, Easter Light, so basically every targeted ability, right? And also, if you guard with the Nazgûs, Nazgûs are also able to detect those invisible units. 
All right, so we are in a, in a phenomenal spot. I mean, we should be able to defend this too. I mean, that's like a dream situation, right? We have a crazy amount of eco because we have opened with two furnaces. Look, our base. We have full base and a Uruk pit. Save that one for me. And now it's about to recruit, you know, crossbowmen. And crossbowmen are giving you double the EXP from the Urukai. And with the crossbowmen, you can this way, you know, get to the point in which you can get your Uruk to level 2 much, much sooner. So he's coming with additional peasants. That's a very delayed peasant push. which shouldn't be too effective. We can now use Lords to creep this slowly but surely. Level 5 is going to be a massive power spike. Remember, the only additional damage leadership you can actually unlock from Isengard faction, beside the Warchant, is Lords. And you need to get him to level 5 to achieve that. And recruiting Lords later on is going to make this achievement a little bit more challenging. Because, again, later on your opponent will have, you know, leadership, heavy armor. So Lords' damage is going to be kind of meh and limited. But if you recruit Lords early in a situation like that, you can actually creep, harass the enemy units, and this way get the experience you need for level 3 at least, for the carnage, you know? With level 3, Lords has some self-protection, self-peel. That means even if we go for a risky move, and the opponent Rohirrim are gonna try to fight against us, we can draw the sword, use carnage, and take them out. Boom, okay. Nice, so very nice, very nice, very nice. We have us level 2 crossbowman Urukai combo. Remember the Uruk at the beginning of the game was level 2. Now we can build the armory too. And play it kind of slow. So we know we cannot go for the full map control. We have no units for that. But with the amount of units we have and lords, we can try at least to achieve something. And again, let's recruit more workers to scout. We see Rohirrim in the middle. So he's creeping a lot. He's potentially creeping the work layer top left, the left um, on the river, and also the bottom left one. But it's fine. So, I'm gonna show you guys the power of the Isengard. So, Isengard is, the really, is a really fast faction, right? In BFME 1. Oh, the thief! Dude, you stole my money! Why would you do that? We attack soon. You will pay for this. You will pay for this, Rohan. The Riddermark stood in your way, my Lord Saruman. But I'm here to crush them. And Isengard, I mean, one thing, one advice from me, guys, when you play Isengard against Gondor or Rohan, doesn't really matter. You wanna finish off the game as quickly as you can. And Isengard has many, many siege options. So I see players making the mistake to recruit Ballistas. Ballistas are more like a late game siege. Oh, he actually creeped this. He also creeped this one. Okay, so he creeped at least three. Oh, he's engaging. That's a mistake. That's a level two crossbowman Urukai combination, my friend, with War Chant. And he didn't pick up even the money on the ground. Hey, let's go. <laughs> That's the punishment for stealing my money. This way I steal your money and take down your Rohirrim. What is the lesson of today, Kai? Of the day, of the day children? Don't steal Shanks' money. Okay. So, what I'm trying to say is people making the mistake to go for the Ballista. Ballista are more like a late game option if the castle of the opponent is already greatly protected. But early on, if you go for like an early siege potential, then you can also build ramps or even the siege ladder. In this situation, I will try to show you how powerful the Isengard siege is early mid game. But even, we are not gonna wait until very late game. We wanna try to finish off this game as soon as we can. I mean, I don't care. We have industry unlocked. So even if we lose those settlements outside, it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, about the armory, in the armory situation, it's important. When you build the armory as Isengard, you want to buy all the upgrades first, then demolish the armory before upgrading your units. That's very important because armory is going to block one full spot of your castle and you want to get rid of that as, you know, as soon as you can. It's very important to replace the armory dam with a furnace. This way you are getting overall much, much more money. They're attacking us. Okay, I mean, oh, he has Tyrion here. Okay, we can use Cripple from Lourdes and Tyrion will not be able to move. We've expanded the okay, boys. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, man, that this game isn't gonna last a while, by the way. And also, by the way, guys, thank you for the 300 likes on the previous video. As promised, we will be definitely working out on the new faction guides for BFME 1. Gondor, Rohan, Isengard, Mordor. Um, it's hard to make a general 
suggestion about the build orders. It's actually depending also on the matchup and also on the map. So we will be basing it uh, on the map Forts of Eisen. Again, it might be different on a map like Westfold or Dunhero or, you know, Fangon Forest because those maps are bigger. They will obviously favor evil factions like Isengard and Mordor more. But uh, Forts of Eisen is like the golden standard. You know what I'm saying? That's like the most used uh, 1v1 map in the game. And for that reason, our upcoming guides are going to be also based on this map. Oh, okay. You are coming. Are you sure about that? Hey, they are, they are, he has even peasants around this side. Oh, it didn't change the formation just in time. In BFME 1, you need to change the formation to not receive damage with the pikemen. If you don't use the battle formation, you can still get trampled down and you will receive, receive some sort of damage. And especially with the uh, porcupine formation, you can deal incredible amount of revenge damage. You pretty much one-shot them. So he has shields purchased. I might go for a base rush, but it's fine. You know, we should be in a good spot. We have now two combos with lords, almost level four. Okay, so our goal is to upgrade our units and then build the, arm, build the siege wards and go. Go, 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 go. Again, that's not normally the way I play this matchup. Normally in this matchup, you would like, you would see me recruiting. Whoa, hey, what are you doing, Rohirrim? One Rohirrim is gone. Kill the peasants so they cannot kill our um, Eggman. He's recruiting more and more peasants. At this point of the game, he's making many, many mistakes and feeding us a lot of power points. Now, you will, now there comes the siege works. And then, boys, go for the ram or for the ladder and we go ham inside the jeans. That's the plan, okay? That's the plan. And Lourdes is almost level 4, so one more level away from getting 60% additional damage. In total, with Warchant, it would mean 110% damage. And long story short, that in our book means hitting like a truck. Industry is almost back up too, that's beautiful. And yeah, I mean, let's, you know, in, in the late game, what you can do as Isengard, recruit some Berserkers and put them, send them to settlements. They are actually dealing a lot of damage. They can also take down those farms quite fast and be annoying, you know what I'm saying? They cost only 200 each, so in late game, it's affordable. And they can also be great in this matchup against Rohan to kill the peasants. Okay, we need to recruit more pikemen now. Okay, I'm not gonna move from this area to my own base. I, I wanna actually put pressure on him. Industry is available. Use it the second it's available. We need eventually more and more pikemen. Kill back, please, pikemen, because he might go for the base. Let's kill those peasants too. <laughs> oh boys, it's gonna be funny now. Watch this. Please watch carefully what we are going to do. It's going to be so hard for him to defend this. Holy moly. In this matchup, look there, we have a ladder. In this matchup, you need to understand one thing. And the one thing you need to understand is Rohan's defense is worse than Gondor's defense. Even the Rohan battle towers can be targeted and destroyed by your fire or upgraded combos or archers. So even if he builds battle towers, we can take them down. And the ladder <clears throat> will give us the chance to clamp his wall and destroy him from inside. That's our Trojan horse in battle for Middle-earth 1, boys. That's going to be absolutely fiesta. Watch this, please. Oh, I see battle tower is coming up, but hey, that's the demonstration. There we go. I'm going to show you guys. The tower will take so much damage. Look at this. I mean, we are not able to burst it down because we have no war chance, but it's still taking so much damage. It's an investment of 800, and that's, um, you know, it's like a wood tower. Kind of makes sense. Wood is vulnerable against fire. The Gondor towers are made of stone, so they are much more resistant, and that's why they cannot even be targeted by combos. Look at this, boys. Let's go climb, 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 climb. Look at this. I mean, how... <laughs> How often do you see that in a multiplayer match? There we go. Boom, Warcha. Imagine a Hulk strike or a Gimli leap attack there. That would be kind of crazily funny. Even though I would lose, I would still be happy about it. But he has no loot and, I mean, he has no Gimli and also no Legolas. He's trying to rush, but we have, like, multiple pikemen. Look at this. We have, like, four pikemen in the base. Now it looks like he's giving up this base. So that's a bad thing from him. He needed to try to defend this, right? With Statue, with Theorin, with Whelm. And you need to try... To, because this damage is insane like if you lose a castle that means minus eight thousand now you might say but it's only five thousand no every building inside your castle cannot be even replaced he lost the armory he lost the citadel so basically you will lose level two farms remember if you build the farms at the beginning you have only level one farm 
And a level 2 farm is worth much more. A level 3 farm is worth much more. Hold on. Hey, you can't do much, my friend. I have too many pikemen in my castle. Too many pikemen. I see a four pikemen in the castle. What can men do against such a reckless seat? Theodem was right. And he's giving up his castle. It's like an automatic win. But it looks like he doesn't want to give up yet. He want to fight until the end. It's them. They're attacking. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of Isengard's push. That was unexpected from him. He didn't expect my siege ladder. Because what can you do against that? The only bet you have is you need to kill the ladder before I can make it to the wall. And that's why ladders or rams are much, much greater than ballista. Especially the ladder is so underrated. Because the way the ballista and the, ladder, uh, the ram work... Your opponent has reaction time to that, right? He will see the gate or the wall is getting damaged and he has some time for preparation. He can try to engage a little bit later, try to coordinate his defense, but the ladder is an insane, insane movement. So, in, you know, in one second, you are inside the castle and there is no preparation time. The only pre pre preparation time is you see the ladder coming towards your wall, but that's about maybe 10 seconds and this is not enough to react to that. So he destroyed the outpost. The only thing that keeps him alive is the outpost at the top side. So I want to actually recruit. Um, let's go for Devastation. We can use Devastation and recruit now Saruman, the White Wizard. Okay? Because he might be going for the Cat and Tom and Jerry gameplay. Look how many Berserkers we have up on the field too. That's amazing. Will not be stopped. Okay, we are in a very good spot. Isengard. Oh, he's annoying with the Rohirrim, but it's fine. Dude, look, that's the thing, you know. With Berserkers, look, we are fighting for the map control. Who needs war players? You don't need that. We have the full bottom side under our control. Now we are moving up to the top side. And I don't think he can defend this. Now we have Lourdes, level almost 4. He didn't get any experience because he's not fighting. As the opponent is touching the fight. I think he's underestimating his Rohirrim potential. Rohirrim with full upgrades, heavy armor, horseman shields, and forge plates, in theory leadership, can actually achieve a lot. Like, trust me, if he would have built a statue, in, because did you guys notice that my pikemen couldn't climb the ladder? That's also gonna be fixed in the upcoming version. So, also the patch 2.22. Um, it's being improved on all the time. So we are playing a lot of games. Many, many people are playing a lot of games. And the more feedback we get, the more improvement, the more advanced we can go and try to bring it all to the next level. And the good thing about this situation is that you guys can always click one button on your launcher when it's up to, when the update is available and boom, you are up to date. He's actually annoying me. <laughs> He's annoying me. Like, he, what are you doing, bro? You are trying to disturb me now. Oh, boy. I mean, can I destroy this fast enough before he can destroy mine? I don't hope, I, I hope so. Let's hope for the best. Okay. Let's combine them two, just why not? Oh, he destroyed the outpost once again. He's gonna buy it, isn't he? <laughs> this is tilting, by the way. He don't do that to me, man. Come on, Pikeman, you can do it. Don't buy it, don't buy it. Oh, he bought it! <laughs> the last possible second. What if he has the game, boys? But oh, he has even Elven Warriors. Are you kidding me? Okay, this guy is like literally trying to get on my nerves now. Okay, okay. Oh boy. So I think we need to make a two army situation here. Just because he might do the same. Luckily he cannot do the same for the castle. Because castle is a bit more expensive than the outpost is. But this is a little bit telling. So we gotta keep this pikeman around his side. Because as we are talking he has only Rohirrim, right? He has nothing to deal with the pikeman. And now we need to try to stall until we destroy the last remaining outpost and make sure that he is not in the meantime able to buy the other outpost. Okay, I want to use the Palantir to make them even faster. These archers are chasing us down, but let's ignore them. They will be dying to the towers of the Isengard castle. So evil factions have the chance to be extremely strong with the defense. Every level 3 building, including resource buildings like slaughterhouses and furnaces, are going to act like a tower. Oh, he's coming with the peasants. I might actually be able to fight this eventually. 
Who's shooting me? Yes, ignore them. We have work to do. Stay alert. I want to use War Chant and fight this actually. I'm waiting for the War Chant. Hold on a second. Because I need to make sure to defend this. So we have heavy armor plus War Chant. That's going to make our pikemen strong enough to fight against the peasants. Okay. Oh, he's, he's focusing on the buildings only. But once the peasants are gone, this Rohirrim cannot fight against us. I think he has not even a heavy, a heavy armor yet. I think we destroyed the armory before he could buy the heavy armor. We have also the devastation. The devastation is super underrated. Okay, just focus down the buildings now. Just focus down the buildings now. Come on now. Saruman, you can level them up. There we go. We have double army now for the worst case scenario. And what we gotta do is just camp on the spot. Camp on the spot with the two pikemen and just try to stall the game until we destroy the last remaining outpost. Even if we lose them against the uh, peasants, I don't care. Just focus down the buildings. So he's... Oh, look. <laughs> don't trample them, though. You cannot trample them. And, and, and don't tell me about the castle. Don't tell me about the castle. And... We are victorious just like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. If it was, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Keep hitting like a truck. And also, stay beyond standards. Peace out.